HD Zero just Ooh. achieved something that no other digital FPV system has been able to. It's something that both DJI and Walks now can't actually do. And you can only really do this with analog, except, well, it's analog, not digital. And that thing is be a single digital FPV system that you can use on every kind of quad. From whoops, racing, freestyle, long range, cinema whoops, you can do it all with HD Zero. DJI just isn't designed for whoops and sure, I've seen some people use it at a race. And yeah, Walksnail has a race mode, but they're yet to solve how you actually integrate the Walksnail system into racing. But let me just caveat this by saying that, yeah, sure, I know you can decase and strip down a DJI 03 air unit and use it on a whoop. And there are clubs out there that allow you to race with DJI. However, using these systems for whoops and racing is like using a sledgehammer to drive a square peg into a round hole. They're just not fit for purpose. HD Zero achieves the one system to do it all by having a VTX for every use case. The Whoop Light VTX for all of your tiny whoops, the Race 3 VTX for all of your racing needs, and it also plays nice with analog, and you combine that with the Event VRX, which has both HD0 and analog for race directors. But HD0 have always struggled with the micro or sub 250 gram segment, and even five inch freestyle as well. And when you choose to buy a three and a half inch quad, you typically only have a choice of DJI or Walksnail because they offer one watt of output power. And with HD0, you'd only get 200 milliwatts with the original Whoop VTX. But what if you were to do a five inch freestyle build and you wanted to use HD zero, like the original freestyle VTX? Well, it's sheer size meant that it was practically impossible to use on most frames. And with the new HD zero freestyle V2 VTX, which is basically the one watt freestyle that's been redesigned and shrunk into the same size as a Vista, which is even smaller than an O3 air unit, you can now have a single digital FPV system that will do everything. And this then leads us to the question, how come it's only HD zero that you can really do everything with? And why can't the other systems? Well, to answer that, we need to understand a little bit more about how you go about designing a digital FPV system. And it's not as simple as, yeah, DJI is the best because its image quality is the best. It's got better resolution and better penetration because really each system has its own strengths as well as its own weaknesses. Think of developing a digital FPV system as a lot like picking a fantasy football team. Instead of playing positions like quarterback or kicker, you've got your different capabilities or features like image resolution, latency, range, penetration, size. And then when you build your team, if you select all the best or highest performing players for one position, that means you're going to have to compromise and get lower performing players for other positions. So if we decided to play a game of digital FPV fantasy football, well, you'd have the DJI 03 system for, who for image resolution have practically drafted Tom Brady. And that also meant that you, in your next pick, you get Gronk for penetration. But that comes with a compromise on range. DJI 03 has a hard cutoff of 25 kilometers and the Vistas was 13. And you also get stuffed on latency, 30 to 40 milliseconds. Meanwhile in the draft, HD Zero went all out for ultra low latency, drafting Tyreek Hill, which gave them 14 milliseconds of ultra low fixed glass to glass latency. But going with low latency means they have to compromise on things like image resolution and penetration. They don't just have the budget or a high enough draft pick for Peyton Manning. And then you might be thinking, well, where does Walks now fit into all of this? Well, they chose to draft players that were reasonable performers. They took a balanced approach, typically all around, but utilized their earlier picks for higher resolution and better penetration and a decent amount of latency. So you've got these digital systems that prioritize different capabilities or different picks in the draft. 
But then you also have to consider how each of these systems are made, which is more similar to our everyday computer than we think. You see, Walks now basically purchased a chipset off the shelf, just kind of like buying an Intel processor from Best Buy. While DJI did the equivalent of having someone like AMD customize an existing off the shelf chip specifically for their needs. And HD Zero, well, they did an Apple and built their own processor from the ground up. And with DiviMath being the company behind HD Zero as not only the designer, but the maker of the processor, it's meant that things have taken a little bit of time to get where they are today. So now that we understand the differences in each of these digital FPV system, let's put the HD Zero Freestyle V2 on a build. And let's put it on a build that there would be absolutely no way the original Freestyle VTX would fit. And I chose to put the V2 on a quad that was previously running DJI 03 Air unit as well. And that's my Quadmula Siren F3, which is a three inch Freestyle FPV drone. Now, as you can see from the small form factor of the V2, it's perfect for micro builds. And because it's perfect for a three inch build, it's definitely gonna fit in a five inch as well. Wiring the V2 to the flight controller is reasonably straightforward, but look out if you're gonna be using the included plug. And if you're gonna be using a flight controller with a DJI or HD plug as well, as you're gonna to need to repin the connector to line up with all the right outputs on the flight controller. You may also notice in the product description, the Freestyle V2 is rated at 200 milliwatts. And since HD Zero is a US based company, there's risk that shipping the transmitter at one watt might have some legal implications. So if you have a ham license or just don't care and are gonna go ham anyway, you're able to unlock it. And that's done by updating the Freestyle V2 with specific unlocked firmware and then power cycling the unit and finally updating to the latest version of the VTX firmware. And it's also a good opportunity to update your goggles at the same time, as well as some of your other VTXs if you haven't already. Setting up Betaflight is also really easy. There's a HD zero preset, and all you really have to do is just select the right boxes, apply the preset, and go and tweak your OSD to your liking. From there, you're pretty much good to go. So if you're looking to buy the Freestyle V2, there are two options to choose from. The first being a standalone VTX for $100, and then you can get it with the Nano 90 camera, MIPI cable, and antenna in a Freestyle V2 kit for $150. Now, the Freestyle V2 does support all the resolutions on offer by HD Zero, except the included Nano 90 camera can't do 1080p at 30 frames per second. There's a micro V3 camera currently in development. And from what I hear, that should offer every resolution available on the HD Zero platform. Now, after getting the Freestyle V2 on my quad and taking it out for a flight, I chose to test out 540p at 30 frames per second on R1 to get the maximum power output. I still need to do a long-term durability test and review, as well as some range testing and penetration, but 540p at 60 frames per second, especially on the new low band video channels, should give HD Zero really good penetration. So subscribe if you wanna see those videos in the future. But for me, the most impressive thing here is the form factor. And it means I'm now gonna to have to update the HD Zero version of my course on how to build a five inch freestyle drone because that's using the old freestyle VTX. But there's also analog DJI and Walksnail versions of the course. Just check out the link in the description. Overall, for me, the form factor is the biggest game changer here. And not only just for the video transmitter itself, but what that means for HD Zero as a digital FPV system in its entirety. Because now, thanks to the Freestyle V2, you can now have HD Zero on any kind of build for any kind of flying. With that being said, I'm Darren Allett. Until next time, don't forget to send it.